Well, it's good to uh, to be back in person and, and see some some friendly faces, or at least uh, right, at least some partial faces. So, one step uh, back to normalcy. So, I'm really excited to be here today. Uh, my name's Danian Hansen. I'm a software engineer with Tetrate. Uh, I've been involved uh, with various CNCF projects, contributor and maintainer, uh, since the early days of Kubernetes and CNCF. Uh, but today I'm here to talk to you about Envoy and uh, specifically Envoy extensibility using WebAssembly or WASM for short. You know, one of the powerful aspects of Envoy is its uh, extensibility. And um, Envoy provides several different um, ways to be extended. Uh, one option is if you need to extend Envoy, you can write a native C++ filter. Um, if you know C++, that's great. Uh, if the filter is generalized enough, you may even be able to add that filter to uh, the native Envoy filters. But if it's not, then you have to maintain that filter uh, on your own and you have to maintain uh, that Envoy binary on your own. Um, uh, because you'd have to go ahead and you would take the Envoy so source code, add your filter to it and compile it with your filter and maintain your own Envoy binary. Another option is Lua-based filters. Envoy exposes a uh, minimalistic Lua API, so you can write uh, Lua scripts. It, again, if you, uh, if you know Lua, could be a great option for you, especially if, uh, if it's very basic uh, functionality that you need to, to add. Uh, but today I'm gonna talk to you about uh, the last and uh, the newest option, which is WASM filters. So let's uh, first start off talking about what is WASM. So it's a binary instruction format, right? So it's a format to group a bunch of ones and zeros together into fields that can be interpreted by a stack-based virtual machine, right? So stack-based virtual machine will, uh, will pull and put values onto a stack. And uh, WASM says that it's designed to be por a portable compilation target, right? So you can go ahead and you can write a WASM module in the language of your choice and then you compile it into this WASM module that is that binary instruction format. Um, and it is portable in the sense that uh, it can run inside a web browser, it could run inside uh, no, a Node.js application, and what we're gonna talk about in detail today is actually running it inside of a server, which is, of course, Envoy. So let's uh, discuss some of the benefits of WASM. So, uh, so WASM currently supports over 30 different languages that you can write your WASM modules in. Uh, it is fast, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it, is, uh, it gets built very quickly. Um, it's, uh, the binary format is very efficient, so you can load your modules very quickly. Um, it's safe, so uh, the WASM module actually runs inside of a sandbox called a WASM VM, which we'll talk about in more detail. And so the, the WASM VM has no direct access to the host. Any type of access is done through APIs, and we'll talk about those APIs in more detail uh, in future slides also. Um, and I mentioned that it is portable. Um, so again, it could uh, run in various uh, environments. But let's talk about WASM and Envoy in, uh, in more detail. So uh, WASM or Envoy supports WASM runtimes by default. It's the, uh, the V8 runtime, uh, which is a, um, uh, a WASM runtime that uh, is built in C++ um, and um, again, the default for, for Envoy. And, and as we know, Envoy has a, a multi-threading uh, model architecture, and so each worker thread uh, would have one or more of these WASM VMs, 
And these VMs uh, would be created if you create an, uh, a filter like an HTTP filter or a network filter that you want to provide this additional customized logic using Wasm. But there's also a VM that can run in the main thread, and this is called a singleton VM. So one of these VMs that runs in the main thread that's responsible for more, you know, very similar uh, type of tasks that, uh, that the main thread is responsible for, some kind of uh, global tasks. Um, and we'll talk about some examples of, of these global tasks in more detail. And proxy WASM is a, is a standard. Um, it's an implementation agnostic uh, standard of interfaces uh, for running WASM and proxies. And Envoy has implemented this standard. Uh, and the standard defines these low level, uh, it's considered an ABI, but this low level interactions uh, between Envoy and your WASM VMs. And instead of using this low-level standard ABI, uh, ProxyWASM also supports several different SDKs, language-specific SDKs uh, like uh, Rust, uh, Go, and the Go SDK is what I'm gonna go ahead and, and demonstrate later on in, in today's talk. And those uh, SDKs provide uh, the functions, the callbacks that you would use for writing uh, your WASM modules. And so the WASM service, right? So I, I mentioned earlier that there are a few different, um, that, that the VMs don't actually have access directly to the host. The VMs communicate through APIs and, and uh, Envoy exposes several different APIs. Um, it, you know, if you want to go ahead and use a stats or log API to, uh, along with a timer API to periodically uh, go ahead and, and send metrics to a, a, a sync, like a stats sync. Um, there's also the shared data and message queue APIs that allow for interaction between your VMs. So uh, your worker thread VMs, uh, they can be uh, collecting metrics uh, and then storing those metrics in this uh, using the shared data API. And the WASM service extension, that singleton VM, can periodically go ahead and pull uh, those metrics uh, from the shared data and then again export those or vice versa, right? The, the, the WASM service could periodically use uh, the HTTP or gRPC APIs to make external gRPC or HTTP calls and then store that data in shared data, right? Or uh, again, with a message queue, uh, the WASM service could be a subscriber for your worker thread VMs that periodically publish um, some sort of data to the message queue. And so, uh, this WASM capability is, uh, is managed through the Envoy configuration, right? And so uh, depending on whether you're uh, creating a HTTP filter or a network filter or you're using the WASM singleton service, all of this is configured through the Envoy configuration. And one of the key aspects of that configuration, you tell Envoy, where does this WASM module exist? Uh, now, just like um, you know, other services and configuration of Envoy, uh, you could have a control plane like Istio and use XDS to go ahead and, and grab that configuration, extension configuration, or ECDS, is a service that uh, can be used to, uh, to manage uh, the extension configuration. And instead of just having this module locally, uh, the module can exist remotely. And, um, and again, part of this configuration, uh, Envoy will go ahead and grab that uh, WASM module remotely and then instantiate it. Well, and here's a configuration of the WASM service. Again, there's only one WASM service within Envoy that runs in the main thread. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, 
right? You could go ahead and have a local file name or store your WASM module remotely. And the .wasm extension, right, this is our, our, our bytecode that, uh, the WebAssembly bytecode that was compiled. And here's one of the key uh, parameters is a singleton true. Um, uh, and you see that all of the WASM service configuration is done in, inside the bootstrap extensions. And there's really two key areas of this configuration. Right, there's configuration of the VM itself, uh, and you see here where we're specifying the V8 runtime, and again, the V8 runtime is the default run, uh, runtime for, uh, for Envoy. And we specify where that module exists. Um, along with this other configuration, uh, this is uh, configuration here, the my config uh, value and my value, the key value pair. This is a configuration that you actually pass into the module itself. And I'll show an example of that in, in my demonstration. Here's an example WASM HTTP filter configuration. You see under the HTTP filter section of the Envoy configuration, we specify that this is a WASM HTTP filter. We give it its typed config, a name, an ID for the VM, in this example, we're passing no configuration, but just like the other example, we, we uh, specify for the HTTP filter uh, where this uh, WASM bytecode exists. So let's uh, jump into uh, a demo. I'll, I'll pause here for a second in case anyone wants to follow along. I uh, have the demonstration hosted in my GitHub repo. Let me uh, exit out of here. And let's go. Pull this up. So here is the repo where I am, uh, I am hosting uh, the demo. And instead of, uh, I thought maybe I'd be short on time, so instead of going through each step of the demo, I went ahead and kind of jumped through, set some things up, uh, have already created the WASM module, uh, and we'll talk through what that looks like. Uh, and uh, I use the, the Go SDK because that's what I program in, but um, in the proxy WASM repo, there's links to all the other SDKs, uh, language-specific SDKs, uh, if you prefer a different language. Um, let's actually, uh, let me pull up my IDE and show you what this module looks like. Right. How does that look? The, that big enough where everyone can read? A little bigger, let's see how we do this here. Uh-oh. Uh, let's see, can I make it bigger? Uh, hmm, don't know how to make it larger here. So just bear with me, and um, and again, if uh, if you'd like, you can go ahead and, and jump to my repo. I apologize for that. Uh, so what we define here is, uh, you know, main is uh, function main is the entry point into uh, a Go program, um, and it calls. It makes a call. Oh, here we can do this. Does that zoom in for you guys as well? Oh, okay, cool. All right, here we go. Coming up with solutions. Uh, so it makes a call to uh, the, the proxy WASM set VM context. So there is a VM context that's created for each WASM VM, and it's responsible for managing uh, plugins, right? And, um, and we'll walk through uh, what the plugin looks like as well. We're using the default uh, context, VM context. We create so not only do we create this, uh, uh, this VM context, but now we need to create a, a plugin context. Uh, so we're essentially now uh, plumbing through, uh, we're plumbing through attributes uh, of our WASM module uh, throughout our code. So the VM context, as I med mentioned, it's responsible for creating uh, and managing plugin context and uh, you have a plugin that then manages 
your filters, either your HTTP or network filters, which are represented as contexts in their own. And so we have a, a context ID, and in the demo, we're, we're gonna go ahead and add headers uh, for, uh, for responses. And we're also gonna take advantage of the, uh, the counters, um, the, the counter API, and add a header counter every time we, uh, we see a, um, a request not only are we gonna add the headers, but we're also gonna go ahead and manage a counter. Here's our plugin context, uh, where we again plumb through the additional headers, the context, and the hello header counter. And so this, uh, this hello header counter, what it will do is it's going to look for a specific header uh, key, and based on that key, it will increment the counter, and we'll see this in the HTTP context. So uh, we need to start up uh, the plugin. Uh, a VM, again, there's a single VM context per Wasm VM, um, but we could have multiple plugins uh, within the VM context. And so we, uh, we get the configuration of the, uh, of the plugin. Uh, we go ahead and log a critical error if there's any issues loading the configuration. And when I say the configuration, um, in this example, I'm gonna run Envoy locally and pass through this Envoy config. And in the slide that I showed you earlier, there was no configuration that was being added, but in my HTTP filter, you're gonna see that I actually have some configuration here. And the values that I'm uh, passing in um, is this header one equals some value, header two equals a second value, just some basic configuration that I'm passing into my WASM module. And so this is where, right, the plugin goes, goes ahead and reads that configuration, gets the configuration and stores it in this value or in this variable, excuse me. And we will go ahead and skip any, uh, any configuration that has a comment in front of it. But what we're doing is, is we're gonna go ahead and we're going, to, uh, we're going to look for any configuration that has this equals value separator. And again, if we go back to the Envoy YAML, that's exactly what our configuration is. So instead of actually creating any of the, uh, these values uh, within the code, I'm gonna go ahead and just read them from the configuration. I create a new HTTP context and go ahead and, and continue to plumb through um, the, uh, the headers, the response headers, and the hello header counter. And, you, and this HTTP headers type is of the default HTTP context and continue to plumb through the additional headers and the header counter. And this is where we go ahead and we say, you know, get the request header. If the request header includes hello, we don't care about the value, we just go ahead and ignore the value here. If, if, the, um, if the request header, right, so we're operating on a request header here for this HTTP context, and if we don't find the, the hello uh, key, we don't care about the value, but if we don't find it, we'll just continue, right? We don't want to um, uh, you know, drop the connection or, or drop the request, anything like that, we'll just continue. But if we do find it, we're gonna go ahead and increment that hello header counter. We're gonna also log uh, that we uh, have incremented the counter. And then uh, we also have an on HTTP response headers, right? So we, whenever this uh, method is called, we'll log, and we'll see that in the Envoy logs, and we add additional headers, right? So um, the additional headers are those headers that we go ahead and pass in through the configuration. We'll see that as we go ahead and, and uh, test this out. 
All right, so let's go here. And um, so one of the first things we're gonna do here, let's see, yeah, is compile our, uh, our WASM module. And the Go SDK actually uses Tiny Go, which replaces the Go's native compiler into, um, uh, replaces the native compiler so that the compiled programs are much smaller in size. There are some caveats and limitations. So if you're interested in the SDK, go ahead and take a look at the docs and make sure you familiarize yourself with those caveats. Uh, but let's go ahead and what we do here is we're gonna go ahead and um, build our WASM module from this main.go We now have the main.wasm, and again, this is, uh, this is the module that we go ahead, and if we go back to the Envoy config here, we'll see that we've got main.wasm, right? So we're telling the, uh, the wasm VM that this main.wasm is, uh, is local and what's used to instantiate the VM. So let me start um, Envoy. I'm gonna have to pull up another screen here. There we go. Let's start Envoy again here and let me curl. I have it here. So here we go. Uh, so in, in the left hand side of the screen here, we've got Envoy running. Uh, we specified where the config file is. Uh, and on the right hand side, um, and again, I've got Envoy running locally here uh, on my laptop. And on the right hand side uh, represents a client that is uh, you know, hitting Envoy. Um, and a couple things that I'm doing with curl here is I'm specifying um, a header. Hello is a key, it means a value. And then uh, envoycon.danian.com, that just um, resolves to uh, my loopback address or local host. And in my Envoy configuration, I have a listener on port 10,000. Um, maybe I should actually jump over here. And uh, again, here's the, the listener on uh, port 1000 and the configuration that I'm passing into Envoy. Uh, let me show you here the configuration a little bit more. So on this uh, listener, I've got my filter chains and I've got uh, just uh, Envoy configured to set up a direct response for the uh, for a root uh, to respond with a, a 200 status code and a hello world. So uh, what we see here is Envoy does respond as we go ahead and, and hit that listener. And because it's running uh, with our WASM module, you see a couple things here, is that uh, we've got those header, those response headers that were set in our configuration. And then uh, again, Envoy is, uh, is responding with, with hello world, a direct, a direct response. Um, now, one of the things that 
we're doing in the WASA module is actually adding a metric counter so that, uh, or actually before I get into that, on the left-hand side here, you see the, the logging that I set up in, in, within the module. Um, and so we are logging the different methods that we're, count, uh, that we're calling. We're logging that the hello header counter was incremented and that it's done, um, the filter is done processing. And so if I do hello me again, you see again, we're able to, uh, to hit Envoy's listener and Now what I did here is that uh, Envoy, my local Envoy is exposing uh, the admin or manage uh, admin endpoint on 8001. And so I can go ahead and get uh, the stats. And I mentioned that the, uh, the, the WASM module uh, is uh, collecting metrics. I created this hello header counter metric and every time that we uh, that we go ahead and curl that um, that listener, it uh, increments this hello header counter metric. And one of the things I could have done to expand this is, uh, as I mentioned, that singleton service. Right, uh, we can take advantage of the other Envoy APIs uh, to go ahead and uh, you know store these metrics in the shared data. Uh, pull those metrics and then uh, periodically export those to our uh, stats sync. So let's see here. That's running. How are we doing with time? Two minutes? All right, let me, uh, I should have time to, to show you this as well. Um, so I, I mentioned, right, so this example is just Envoy running locally, um, but I also showed you that uh, Envoy. Um, that you know, Wasm that the extension config uh, can be managed through an XDS server, and so um, I've got uh, let's see, I've got Istio running, let's make sure that we're good to go here. So I've got Istio running, and um, and I let me show you what I have here. So I've got um, I've got an Envoy filter and I've got an example application, my HTTP bin application that is exposed uh, using an Istio uh, gateway and an Istio virtual service. And um, and what I'm going to do is with this Envoy filter is tell the Envoy uh, sidecar for this application uh, that it is to use this WASM module. The same WASM module, module that I showed locally, um, I'm now storing that instead of locally, I'm st storing it remotely. Um, and so uh, the Istio agent that runs with the Envoy sidecar will go ahead and pull uh, this WASM module validate it against uh, the uh, WASM spec, spec, make sure it's safe to run, and then go ahead and run it in a, a WASM VM. And so if we go ahead and we apply, um, let's see here. demo manifest and HTTP bin. All right, our uh, HTTP bin app is running with uh, its sidecar. And if I go headers,
you see that uh, through the Istio gateway, I'm, I'm able to, oh, wait, no, that's not, it actually didn't hit it. Um, Host. There we go. Now we hit it. You see that I received a 200 response from my app through the Istio gateway and virtual service. Right? And so now let's go ahead and, and, and those, uh, those headers that, response headers that I'm setting with, um, uh, with my WASM module, they don't exist, right? We don't see any of these, uh, these response headers. But let me go ahead really quickly, because I know I'm running out of time here. Let me go ahead and add the Envoy filter. All right. And again, one of the powerful aspects of WASA modules is we don't have to reload Envoy. Uh, your module is dynamically linked into um, the Envoy process. And now, when I curl, now you see the two headers that um, are being added to the HTTP response. So, um, so yeah, that's it. I hope uh, I hope you found uh, th this time in you know informational and it gives you a little uh, insight into Wasm modules, being able to extend Envoy through Wasm. And I'll be around. So if you have any additional questions, uh, feel free to uh, to reach out to me. Okay.